Frazier adding more numbers, more yards to those. Oh, they don't have them yet. Look at Tommy Frazier. How many tackles can one man break? Touchdown. What's up, everybody, and welcome back into the Play the Fights on College Football show, the Nebraska fan perspective. If you've never been here before, a little outlook on what we do throughout the season. We're going to preview and recap every game. We'll do the recaps for every week during the preview for the following week. Obviously, we don't have one because we are in week one of 2024. The hype has been built. The stage has been set. Dylan Riola has been named the starter. And the point of these is for you as a fan to learn about the team you're going to play. Obviously, if you're a fan of Nebraska, you know what they look like. You've watched every game, every snap. You know what needs to be changed. Everybody's got their own opinion here. Point of this, we're going to teach you a little bit about UTEP. I can promise you, you do not know as much about UTEP as you think you do and what they're going to look like this year because there's a lot of question marks around this team. So there's a lot to go through tonight. And we're super excited to be back in the college football world. If you're not familiar with Play the Fight Song, check it out. It's a college football-wide show where we cover previews, predictions, bets, all the above. And it's not just the regular fans sitting around next to each other's chopping it up about ball. This is researched stuff. We live, eat, breathe, and die on this sport. And it's four kids from the Midwest, so show your support. We have representatives from Iowa State, Iowa, and Nebraska, so the mix is there. However... Tonight is about UTEP, so let's focus upon that. UTEP comes into Lincoln with a new look, a new head coach, a lot of excitement, and possibly one of the more passionate G5 teams that you would never have expected to be fan bases, in my opinion. I've seen the accounts on Twitter talking their smack throughout the offseason, so this is a big game for both Matt Rule's second year to get off to a good start and for our team to establish some confidence rolling into a massive rivalry game in week two. But I promise you, this this is not a team to overlook by any means. And we'll go into each individual part of their team and what they're going to look like and what they're going to try and implement in the 2024 season. There's a lot of unknowns with this UTEP team. So let's start by going through, from the top, the UTEP Miners. If you don't know about them, they're out of the Conference USA. It's a not very historically great program. Uh, there's a lot of question marks with the transfer portal that came along with their head coach who we're going to talk about. But let's start off with a little brand raking for fun. It's a beautiful brand. The navy blue, the orange, the UTEP miners, the minor logo. They have some awesome throwback uniforms, I believe, are featured in College Football 25. I think at this point, as fans, we've all played against them at one point in that video game. But great brand. Looking at the team, let's talk about their new head guy, Scotty Walden. Scotty Walden comes in from Austin P. He was the head coach there for not the longest time, but he was very deliberate and very successful within his time there, especially for that school's history. It's a young, fiery guy. In his time at Austin P, he was 26 and 14 as the head coach. He, When I say he's fiery, let me tell you this. If you go back, and watch house highlights like I've done. I watched 11 Austin P highlight games from last year to, to teach you all of this, or at least let you know. This guy is an electric factory. He, he acts like the strength and conditioning coaches do at other power four schools, like the Northwestern strength conditioning coach, headbutting players. Like that's the type of guy Scotty Walden is. He's going to bring a fiery, not fearful team into Memorial Stadium this weekend. Like if they kick a field goal and make it, going to be back flipping on the sideline. He's just that type of guy. He's young, he's hungry, and a lot of people think this UTEP team is going to be successful because they got a guy like this as their head coach now. So in the future, I really do think UTEP is going to be a successful program, at least way more successful than they've been in the past. UTEP is a school that hosts 24,000 students. It's not the biggest in the world, but it's not tiny. And they have not won a bowl game. Granted, we haven't been to one in seven years. I understand. I'm a realistic fan. I've been around. I've been through the ringer with every one of you. But they haven't won a bowl game since 1967. UTEP, that is. So they're really trying to spark something that hasn't been in existence for a long time with a young, fiery coach like Walden. And I really do think he can get this program there eventually. 
he led Austin P to their first back-to-back winning seasons since 1983 and 84, the past two years. Last year, they went 9-3. and three. They won their conference, made the FCS playoffs, got beat by Tennessee Chattanooga, got a chance to watch that game. And I'll tell you where they struggled and probably why they lost that game. And it looked like after watching most of that team, and I focused on watching Austin P because a lot of the transfers on the offensive side of the ball, some impactful guys on the defensive side of the ball are all at UTEP now. They came with him. He said he's going to focus in his time at UTEP on recruiting high school talent out of Texas, not really the transfer portal. But within his first year, he did bring a lot of his production and talent over from Austin P. That's just the team that they're going to be. So the culture is a little bit more established than most first-year guys, especially at G5 schools, just because he brought them along with him. But this is a culture-based program with a head coach like Walden. He he is a likable guy. Like if he was a head coach at a power four here within the next five years, I don't think anybody would be shocked. And it's not to scare you, but it's just to prepare you for he's not going to go in with any fear. He's that type of of coach. I think the only time any of you can ever say you've watched Austin P unless you're a sicko like me, it's probably when they kicked off the COVID season. Remember they were that first game on ESPN during the COVID season. That's probably the last time you watched Austin P and that's okay because it's not a huge program, but this guy made him into a name, into a competitor, into a consistent FCS playoff talk team. And then he hits the transfer portal himself and ends in at the university of Texas, El Paso. So we're excited to bring him into Lincoln. It should be a fun team to watch from a coaching perspective. He got hired there in December of 2023. And from all the offseason stuff I've watched on UTEP, it looks like the culture is really getting established there. He's an excited guy. He's kind of revitalizing this UTEP brand. And hopefully they can be competitive here within the Conference USA in the next few years, but just not week one in Lincoln. Let's talk about the other parts of their coaching staff. They have two guys. It's a very young staff that made the 30 under 30 list, according to 247 Sports. And that is their passing game coordinator, Joe Papalardo, and their running back coach, Jordan McNeil. And their running back coach made it for a good reason, because that's the guy I'm going to highlight on the offensive side of the ball for them is their running back, which we'll get into. But they were both on his staff, on Walden's staff at Austin P. Trent came over to UTEP with him. And both are really young. They're both young, but they're really highly touted by 247. Like these are going to be the guys up and coming, being coaches at your power four schools here within the next five to 10 years and looking to build a little bit of spark down in UTEP. So it's going to be a good school to keep your eye on after their time in Lincoln too. And I really don't think people are, I think people are more underestimating this team than they are overestimating this team coming in week one. So let's dive into the offense side of the ball first, and let's talk about the running back room. I had mentioned the coach, 30 under 30 list. Look at the individual guy that stands out. And obviously, this is somebody that Nebraska will have to take down. Otherwise, they're going to run into some issue. And that's Jevion Jackson Jr., who was a first-team all-conference guy for Austin P last year. 1,300 yards, a little over 1,300 yards on the ground. He was a third-team All-American. And this is the guy that Nebraska really needs to emphasize stopping because their entire offense is they're going to run, 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 and set up the deep balls, deep shots off of their run. Their play-action game, 99% of the time is when they're going to throw the ball deep, according to their film last year. And I assume that's what they're going to try and implement in a Conference USA conference who struggles to cover the deep ball. So that's probably what you're going to look for is that first and second down run. We'll talk about what Nebraska needs to do to find success. And I little disclaimer, I'm a Nebraska fan, so it's hard to say this any other way. But I think Nebraska can let, especially with the most exciting group being for Nebraska, that defensive line. But this is the guy that's going to get the majority of the carries. He's going to be the majority of the production for this UTEP team. And it's a huge transfer for them, for them to get. There's a question mark on this offense. It's going to be the offensive line. The offensive line, they lost all five guys from last year. Walden brought in two transfers from Austin P. But watching their film from last year, that group wasn't great to begin with. They did allow 30 sacks. And with what I said, being Nebraska's defensive line being the best piece, it both has to stop the run game and put pressure on the quarterback. If they can do those things, it's really hard to run an offense anywhere. So the offensive line being kind of a question mark, both with their running back being highlighted, It's a good thing for Nebraska fans to have an easy peace of mind on. And you should, because if you go back, watch Austin P. There's no point in watching UTEP. I'll tell you that right now. There is no point with the outlook of this team and the way Walden runs things. This is going to be an Austin P dash, the smallest version of UTEP that you can see. 
This is Austin P that we're playing and it's a good school. It was a good school. God knows what they'll be this year, but this offense, the screen game, super important as well to them. They run a lot of wide receiver bubbles, a lot of wide receiver screens. They're going to try and get you moving outside. And I think our defensive backs and our linebacking core, who's a little bit experienced and has some talent should be able to shut that down, but it's going to be vital for, again, the defensive line to be able to sniff those out a time or two, maybe blow one up, make an impact play in the backfield, but that's going to be a consistent push for this UTEP team is to get the screen game going. Um, defense will, deep shots will come off play action most of the time, just like I said, uh, and the offensive line is kind of the, the main question mark, but that's the star player on that offense is going to be that running back. On the wide receiver unit, they're young, but a couple of, of more Austin P transfers come over, and they're looking to make kind of a splash in the FBS for the first time, and that's Cam Thomas Jr. and Trey Goodman. They're going to be your top two targets. They're going to be the main starters, wide receiver one and two on the outside. So those will be the guys that people like Malcolm Hartsog, and I know Bly Hill was today said to be limited, but they're going to have to be locked down because if they can't get the run game going, they're going to have to go to the air. And Nebraska's secondary, which I don't want to say is bad, but it's got a little bit more question marks within the fan base than you would talk about, is very important in this game as well. All right, that's the offense. I wouldn't say there's a ton to be terrified of, but it all comes down to stopping the run and screen game. That is main point one. Going on to the defense. The defense is interesting because they got into a couple of dog fights the last few years at Austin P with some good schools. Like if I told you that the coach that came into UTEP was tied six to six at halftime in Neyland Stadium against a top 10 Tennessee team, you'd probably be like, well, that's not good. Really? Because our offense was kind of questionable last year. Granted, we have some new pieces, I have a ton of new pieces, thank God. But that's the type of team this is. Like they're going to be in a dog fight early. They led Tennessee six to three with like four minutes left in the, in the second half of that game. That's Walden. He's going to bring a team that's ready to go into the game. And honestly, UTEP last year, not Austin P had a couple of pieces that Walden now gets to utilize that were pretty good to begin with. And let's start there. Lombardi and Bronco watch list. Mo Westmoreland returns for the minors after leading the unit last year. He was all over the field for this team, and he's going to be the main centerpiece of them finding success in 2024. He posted seven and a half sacks, 10 and a half tackles for loss, 37 tackles in total, 24 of them being solo, four hurries, and a forced fumble. And he stands at 6'2, 250 pounds. So you got to think he's going to be more of a speed rusher to try and get to the blind side. Dylan Riola, we can't let that happen. So experienced guys on that side, Bryce Ben Hart, maybe Ben Scott, double teaming off the end will have to contain. Mo, because he's going to be what this defense is centered around. Um, they look like they're running a 3-3-5 to a 4-2-5 majority of the time. They kind of split more of that time in a 3-3-5. So if you have five offense linemen against three down linemen, you should probably win that battle. But we've seen as our team running a 3-3-5 that sometimes he can create havoc in the run game. Where Miner's defense, I think, will be a struggle is cart guarding the outside. Every Austin P game I watched last year, swing outside zone plays where you give the running back a cutback lane. That's kind of where their fault was. That's where we can get established in the run game. So it's maybe not running between the tackles and hopefully I'm wrong. And Nebraska can do both of these things, but starting in the shotgun, getting going one way, letting Ramir, letting Emmett cut back. That's where you kind of find success against this Austin P defense. And maybe it's not entirely the worst thing in the world to try and get that inside game established at the beginning of the game. But I do think where Nebraska will find most of its success is running that outside with cutback lanes. And that's where they struggled last year, that Austin P team did. So that's what I expect. I don't really expect a much different look when you're first year within a program. This defensive coordinator for UTEP loves to bring pressure. He's going to make mixed looks off this 3-3-5, bits the outside linebacker, blitz their jack, places like that. Like those are that's what Dylan Rylow is going to be dealing with. So I think these short, quick routes on the offensive side of the ball going to be very important for Nebraska's success in this game. If they're giving you two, three, four, five yards of coverage on the bubble, throw a four or five yard out. Just work. You got to you jimmy jack your way down the field. And then when it opens up, maybe that's when you take your deep shot. But what Tennessee Chattanooga did to this Austin P team in the FCS playoffs is they really nickeled and dimed them down the field. And that's where they found their success. Maybe a slant that breaks open. That's kind of what I want to see from Nebraska's offense to find, to find success against this UTEP set and defense. They also do struggle with guarding the screen game. They run it a ton, but 
on wide receiver screens, little eight halfback dump offs that I saw Chattanooga and other teams run against them last year, they gave up consistent yardage on it. So I think Ramir is going to play a huge role in this game because I think Ramir is kind of that screen back for us. And it could be as well. We didn't see him much in those looks last year with the offensive sets that we had. But I think both those guys are going to be involved with some screens. Maybe Jamal, maybe you get Nayor out there on a screen. We saw a lot of that in the spring game. That's super important for Nebraska's success overall, I think, in week one. I also do want to talk about how on the UTEP defensive side of the ball, they tackle pretty consistently in open space. So I think it's going to be important for Nebraska. Obviously, that ball security, we all know about the turnovers last year, even off stupid things like snaps. It's important for Nebraska to find a consistent running game outside with maybe laying the boom a few times because that's what Heinrich did really well early in his career last year against La Tech. He would initiate contact. You'd be bel- you'd be shocked at how teams and players react when they maybe aren't getting blown off the ball every time they go make a, try and make a tackle or blown up. So I think maybe laying the boom a first few times could help out Nebraska on the offensive side of the ball as well. But that's kind of your full look at UTEP. I think Nebraska should handle this game. Really, they should. And, and what I expect from Nebraska is kind of a slow ground and pound to start. Like I could, Matt Rule's the type of guy where if we came out and threw a 75-yard bomb on the first play of the game, or at least tried to, it wouldn't shock me just to you know get the game going. But I do expect him to come out in more of that pro style Having a fullback out there, letting Linda Meyer get to the outside, maybe establish the run game early and then try and let Dylan let it fly after the maybe the pre first quarter nerves calm down. But it's in a game Nebraska should handle, and that's for good reason. There's too much excitement. It's the first time we have not played a power four opponent since 2019 in week one. So you have to take advantage of your situation. Start off one and oh, it's a very important game, but I do think. You need to look more into UTEP. Hopefully I told you enough and you're like, all right, maybe this is going to be a close battle. I don't know if it'll end up being close, but it'll be closer than you think at the start. Like, I don't think this is going to be the type of opponent like a Louisiana Lafayette in 09, where we are up 28 to nothing by the end of the first quarter. Like, this is going to be a slower paced game. Walden knows how to control the clock, how to get his team into games they shouldn't be. Go back and watch Austin P. I promise you this is a good head coach, and you will think after watching this game that UTEP is going to be a successful program down the road. Running back room we've already talked about. I think Ramir and Emmett play obviously a huge role within our offense anyway, but a Naor in the screen game could make a big impact. So watch out for that. On the offensive line, we already talked about that, and everybody knows the quarterback situation. Dylan, get in there. Be yourself. On the defensive side of things, Defensive line, obviously important, as I mentioned, but the cornerbacks are really going to be where the difference is made. Locking down screens, getting off blocks, wrapping up. That's where Nebraska can really slow down this game, kind of make UTEP change plans on the offensive side of the ball and really take advantage of late in the game. So finally, score prediction. What I think that's going to happen in week one for Nebraska, I do think we take this one. I think Nebraska is going to win 31-13 in those last, that's going to be 24-13 probably with, Seven, eight minutes left in the fourth. UTEP will start taking chances because they're aggressive. And that's when we'll kind of close things out. But I do think Nebraska is too deep and experienced on the defensive side of the ball to give up a ton of points here. But it will be a slow paced game at the start. So 31 to 13, I got Nebraska winning. Hopefully I'm right. Drop your sc- score prediction. I want to know what you think. If you hit it head on, I'll send you a No Rivals hat. And if you haven't heard of No Rivals, check them out. They're a great sponsor of the show. ShopNoRivals.com. Nebraska is not available yet. However, there is a ton of Power 4 teams available. The Premium Hack Collection, exclusive designs. They are beautiful. So check those out today. And if you hit the score on the head, I will send you a No Rivals hat. I promise you I will. So 31-13, I got Nebraska winning in week one. We will recap this one when we preview Colorado, which I'm sure everybody will be tuned into. But I appreciate you joining me. Check out Play the Fight Song. The week one preview is Tomorrow night, 7.30, if you're listening to this on Monday, it's Tuesday, August 27th is the day of the show. Check it out. We will preview all five games. If you only care about Nebraska, you're in the right spot. So hit that subscribe button today. I appreciate you being here. We'll see you next time. Go Big Red.